Hi Gemini, welcome to your October 2024 horoscope. Let's jump right into it, especially because we start off the month with a solar eclipse. So this solar eclipse, or the new moon in Libra, is happening on October 2nd. For you, Gemini, this is your fifth house of pleasure, fun, creativity, self-expression. So you might be facing a faded new beginning in one of those areas of your life. This solar eclipse is happening in the Deccan ruled by Uranus. So whatever happens will probably be quite unexpected and perhaps surprising. I want to also give you the permission to not feel like you need to take action or respond or make a decision right away. Usually eclipse seasons are just sort of like, okay, let's get through this and process it before we do anything about it. But the reason I also say this is because we have a lot of planets that are retrograde during the solar eclipse. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all retrograde. Therefore, it's quite smart to reflect, to be introspective, maybe a bit introverted, and process things on your own before taking a step forward. Two days later, on October 4th, we have a trine between Venus and Saturn. For you, this is happening in your 6th and 10th house. And this is quite a supportive um, aspect, meaning that perhaps the hard work you've been putting in your career is helping you establish a very good routine for yourself uh, or vice versa. The efforts that you've been putting into taking care of your health, your body, your routine, making sure you get to bed on time is ensuring that you show up to work refreshed with lots of energy and focus so that you can handle all of the hard work there. Then on October 9th, we have Jupiter going retrograde in the sign of Gemini. That's right, Gemini. This is probably, you're going to feel this um, the most out of all of the zodiac signs, most likely, because it's happening in your first house. And specifically, it's time to take a look at uh, the opportunities that you have faced uh, coming your way in the last uh, couple of months since May, whether you're really taking them and using them to the best of your ability, or whether you're letting them slip by thinking that, you know, oh, they'll, they'll come again. And what I love is that two days later on October 11th is that Pluto goes direct. And this will be the final time that Pluto exits Capricorn and doesn't return there again, at least in our lifetimes. For you, Gemini, Pluto is going direct in your eighth house, asking you if you have really learned the meaning of being vulnerable, trusting, and living life in deep connection and support with other human beings. We then have two very interesting days, which are October 13th and 14th. During these days, the sun trines Jupiter. We might feel quite optimistic. We might feel quite excited about the future, like the world is our oyster and that we can only go up from here. However, the reason these are actually two very interesting days is because we also have two other more challenging aspects happening. The Sun, while trining Jupiter, is also squaring Mars, showing us that perhaps we are not able to take the actions to make those optimistic ideas a reality just quite yet. Our courage, our drive, our passion, motivation might not be there quite yet. Also, on these two days, we have an opposition between Venus and Uranus, further showing us that we might feel torn between this idea of breaking the st status quo, doing something unique and amazing and unexpected, versus staying where it's 
fairly uh, where we're fairly used to, or it's comfortable, safe, peaceful, <laughs> keeping things the way they are right now, because that's also sometimes nice. So honestly, while uh, I would definitely encourage you for sure, uh, allow yourself to feel optimistic, allow yourself to dream and feel good about the future. At the same time, I do uh, recommend to just be cautious about the amount of risks that you take on this day. Then on October 17th, we have a full moon in the sign of Aries. The moon is in your 11th house and the sun is in your 5th house. And this full moon might lead you to see your friendships or the communities you belong to in a new light. You might feel like you can finally see aspects of your friends or this community that you didn't see before. Um, and that might be quite interesting to realize that there is there's something different there. During this full moon, Venus is sextile Pluto. And if you remember, Pluto is asking you about the meaning of connection, the meaning of trust, vulnerability and allowing yourself to be dependent on other people. And Gemini, I can imagine that during this full moon, as you perhaps learn something new about uh, your friends or the communities you belong to, that um, sense of trust and vulnerability might be triggered again. The next day, on October 18th, Venus will enter the sign of Sagittarius. For you, Gemini, this is your seventh house. So you might be finding it quite harmonious to spend time with your partner. You might find things are gelling there quite well. And you might feel like bringing a little bit more of this Venusian aspect into it. You know, bringing your partner flowers or when you're hanging out together, making sure that there's nice music in the background or some candles burning. A couple of days later, on October 22nd, we have a square between the Sun and Pluto. This will be intense, but it will also be quite fast because already the next day, the Sun will move into a new sign. For you, Gemini, the square is highlighting your 5th and 8th house, which shows this tension between wanting to stay lightweight, wanting to focus on fun topics, wanting to have fun, wanting to talk about uh, the weather or the football match or hobbies, uh, but at the same time feeling this need to also really have meaningful conversations, important conversations, conversations that bond you with others in a more intimate way. And like I said, Right away on the next day, October 23rd, the sun enters a new sign, which is Scorpio. For you, Gemini, this is your sixth house. So if you feel a little bit lifeless from the 23rd onwards, it could be because you're not spending enough time focusing on your health and on your routine. So I would recommend uh, that you take a look at your diet, your sleep, and just see if you can alter things and put some energy into that area of your life. The next day, on October 24th, we have a sextile between Mars and Uranus. For you, Gemini, this is highlighting your 12th and 2nd house. And this is a supportive aspect meaning that the spiritual work that you've been doing, getting in touch with compassion, getting in touch with what it means to be a human, is also helping you in some way to build self-confidence and self-love for yourself. It's almost as if by realizing that everybody around you is just trying their best, by realizing that everybody around you deserves love, no matter of their job, no matter where they come from, all of a sudden you also start to realize that that applies to you as well. You too deserve love and acceptance, even though you might not be exactly where you want to be yet. And then at Gemini, we close off the month on October 28th with a square between Venus and Saturn. 
Venus is in your seventh house, Saturn is in your 10th, so this might be a square uh, that you feel particularly strongly compared to the other zodiac signs. And specifically, there's some type of attention between your work and your partnership. Perhaps you're spending a lot of time with your partner and your work suffers. Or, uh, I mean, Saturn is in your seventh house after all, showing that you might have had to put a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work when it comes to your career. And as a result, maybe you're not able to enjoy the beautiful time that you have with your partner as much. You know, perhaps mentally you're still at your work, even though uh, you are physically in a, in a beautiful space with your partner that's full of love and comfort. So overall, Gemini, lots of interesting things happening in October. Definitely a big focus on trust and vulnerability. And of course, self-expression, your routine, and uh, let's not forget your partnership. So overall, lots to keep you busy during the month. I hope you enjoyed this horoscope. And if you feel like you want to learn more about that eclipse at the beginning of October, then make sure you check out the live that I did all about eclipse season. Thanks for joining me, Gemini, and I hope to see you again soon.